ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நமக வெல்கம் டு அவர் ஆன்லைன் டீச்சிங் அகாடமி ஏகலைவா சிபிஎஸ்சி கிளாஸ் டுவெல் எக்கனாமிக்ஸ் சாப்டர் எக்கனாமிக் ரிஃபார்ம்ஸ் சின்ஸ் நைன்டீன் நைன்டி ஒன் பார்ட் டூ திஸ் பார்ட் கவர்ஸ் த மீனிங் அண்ட் ஆப்ஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் ஆஃப் பிரைவேட்டைசேஷன் நவரத்னாஸ் அண்ட் பப்ளிக் என்டர்பிரைஸ் பாலிசிஸ் meaning and objectives of globalization importance of outsourcing world trade organization and the indian economy during reforms privatization means removing strict control over private sector and making them free to take necessary decisions it is the process of involving private sector in the ownership of state owned enterprise the term privatization itself suggests or implies that there's a shift from public ownership to private hands government does it through disinvestment it sells off the shares of public sector companies to the private individuals and institutions this helps the government to come out of losses as this can be managed efficiently by private sector now let us look into the objectives of privatization privatization improves the financial condition of the government government raises funds through disinvestment privatization reduces the workload of public sector because the private individuals and institutions work efficiently and they are also made to take decisions on their own navratnas and public enterprise policies navratnas refer to nine profit making companies in order to enable companies to compete more efficiently at global level the central public sector enterprises are designated with different status like maharatnas navratnas and mini ratnas based on the average annual net profit and average annual turnover Maharatna status is given to a company which has already received Navratna status. Maharatna is the highest status given to an enterprise. These enterprises are given Maharatna status. ONGC Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Power Grid of India Limited Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited Sale Steel Authority of India Limited Bell Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited Gale Gas Authority of India Limited NTPC National Thermal Power Corporation then the indian oil iocl indian oil corporation limited cil it is coal india limited now these are the navratna status companies mtnl mahanagar telephone nigam limited and hal hindustan aeronautics limited a few examples of the companies which received mini ratna status are airports authority of india bsnl bharat sanchar nigam limited and irctc Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation Limited 
the outcome of designating such status resulted in better performance of these companies. Globalization of the economy. Globalization is the outcome of the policies of liberalization and privatization. Globalization leads to unrestricted flow of goods and services, technology and expertise between India and the rest of the world. The whole world becomes a single market. There is free interaction among economies of the world in the field of trade, finance, production, technologies and investment and this is termed as globalization of the economy. There is free flow of goods and services across the countries. It integrates domestic economy economically and socially. It also encourages free flow of capital across national boundaries. Like there is foreign direct investment which boosts the economy. And there is increase in the standard of goods and services produced, making them acceptable at a global level. World Trade Organization, that is WTO, plays a vital role in the context of globalization of the world economies. It was formed as a successor of GATT, that is General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. And this was formed in 1948. Later on in 1995, World Trade Organization was formed. WTO aims at developing bilateral and multilateral trading system. The word by implies that there is trade between two countries. Whereas when it is multilateral trade, it means trade among many countries. Trade agreement among countries. It means when it is more than two countries, it is multilateral trading system. WTO brings the benefits of growth of international trade to member countries. It reduces tariff barriers and removes non-tariff barriers. Tariff barriers are the barriers on imports by increasing import duty and non-tariff barriers refer to the quantitative restrictions. It means how much of goods can be imported. Outsourcing is an important outcome of the process of globalization. It is a system of hiring regular service from external sources. Regular service is the business service. This includes call centers, banking services, film editing, medical transcription, clinical advice, teaching, coaching, etc. India is an important destination of outsourcing. Why has India become an important destination of outsourcing? It is all because India has skilled laborers. Moreover, laborers are available at cheap wage rates. Outsourcing has intensified due to the growth of 
information technology let us discuss the advantages of liberalization privatization and globalization policies the main advantage is that there was increase in the gross domestic product in india indian economy became a vibrant economy after the introduction of the reform this is measured by the growth in gdp the growth of gdp increased from 5.6 percentage in 1980 1980 91 period to 7.4 percentage during 2014-15 after the initiation of the economic reform of 1991 the industrial production increased the IT industries in India achieved global recognition before the reform period there was increase in prices but after the introduction of these policies, there was a check on inflation. The LPG policies led to the flow of goods and services in the economy and this in turn lowered the price of goods. Hence, LPG policies have helped to have a check on inflation. Increase in foreign exchange reserves. One of the reasons that led to the economic reform of 1991 was the decrease in foreign exchange reserves. But after the introduction of LPG policies, the forex reserves increased. And India is now one of the largest foreign exchange reserve holders in the world. These LPG policies led to the flow of foreign investment. Foreign direct investment, that is FDI, foreign direct investment, and the foreign institutional investment, both increased. These policies led to increase in exports too. India is now a leading exporter of automobile parts and other engineering goods and textiles too. Let us now look at the demerits of LPG policies. There was reduction in the employment opportunities. Though the GDP has increased during the reform period, it did not lead to generation of employment opportunities. Still, there were many people who were unemployed even after the initiation of the LPG policy. The next demerit is that there was slowdown in industrial growth. This is due to cheaper imports. Goods were imported at cheap rate and so there was greater flow of goods from other countries and when there is greater flow of goods from other countries the demand for the produce manufactured by the domestic manufacturers got reduced and that was one of the reason for the slowdown in industrial growth the next demerit is the disinvestment the assets of public sector undertakings have been undervalued and sold to the private sector. When it is undervalued and sold, what happens? The government would receive lesser amount than the targeted amount. So that led to less revenue for the government. The proceeds from disinvestment was neither used for developing social infrastructure nor for developing the public sector undertaking. Tax reforms 
also brought about negative impact to the economy. The government decreased the tax. Actually, government thought that the decrease in tax would make people to pay tax. People won't evade the payment of tax, but the revenue from tax was very less for the government. Moreover, reduction in tariff and tax incentives to foreign investors led to limited tax revenue. Decelerating growth in agriculture is also a limitation of LPG policies. The public investment in agriculture reduced. Government neglected agriculture sector and invested very less in developing infrastructure facilities in agriculture. Let it be the power or organized markets or transport facilities, all that was just neglected by the government. Government removed the fertilizer subsidy too. And this resulted in increase in cost of production. When there is increase in cost of production, the farmers were not able to earn profit. Reduction in import duties is also one of the problems of the LPG policies. When the import duties are reduced, there is no demand for the domestic produced goods. Removal of MSP. MSP is the minimum support price. This is the price fixed by the government in favor of the farmers, but that was also removed during the initiation of LPG policies. Hence, the farmers did not get a reasonable price for their produce. Removal of quantitative restriction also burdened the farmers. Production for export market. This motivated farmers to produce cash crops rather than food grains. And this in turn increased the prices of food grains. Though LPG policies were a stimulant to industrial production, but still the growth was too slow. The new economic policy creates more competitive and congenial environment in the economy for improving productivity and efficiency of the economic system. This resulted in unrestricted exchange of goods, technology, production, and expertise. It will definitely influence the direction of our economic development and accelerate the pace of our economic growth. To receive our online lessons, please press the subscribe button and you will receive the latest updates. Thank you.